Okay, so you've got your building. Now, you can do one of two things. It's either been delivered to your property or you've come and pick it up. It's gonna be on a pallet similar to what you see right here. Um, basically, get the pallet home, cut the banding, and you got all your parts and pizzas on this pallet. Each pallet does have all your cladding on the bottom. Each pallet has one extra sheet on the top of the pallet, and you're wondering what that is for. That's your cover sheet. That's basically to protect the, uh, the cladding underneath from forks or any other damage. That sheet is yours. You can use it if you'd like, but you have been given one extra sheet on the pallet. So we're going to go over all the parts and pieces that you got with your building. You're going to have one of two items for anchoring your building down. You're either going to be given a 30 inch rebar anchor. This is for dirt or gravel or asphalt applications, or you get a concrete anchor. This is used to mount the base rail to the ground. Then you're going to be given a bag of self-tapping gasketed screws. These gasketed screws have a seal on there to keep the water out. They're also a self-tapper, so they've got a self-drilling head in there. There's no need to pre-drill whatsoever. The self-tapper will drill itself into the metal. Then you got your dowels. These dowels are used to attach your, la your rafters to your legs. Then you're going to have your two-foot corner bracing. On all buildings, every corner gets this brace. On the bigger buildings, you're going to have a welded in center collar tie, but on the smaller buildings, this also will go in the center. We'll show you the installation of this in a few minutes. Then you got your trim here. This is either going to come in white or black. This is just a beauty kit. We'll go over the installation of this in a bit as well. Then you got your base rail. This sits right on the ground, just as you see right here. This is where your legs actually will slide right over top. Then you're going to have your posts, whatever length of post you got, that's the post you'll be given. And lastly, you're going to have your rafters. Once again, whatever width building you have, that's the width of rafter you'll be given. Okay, so now you're going to get ready to put your frame together. So you're going to lay your legs down, you're going to lay your rafter down, then you're going to grab that dowel that we were discussing earlier. You're going to slide the dowel into the bottom side of the rafter. You're going to put one screw on this side and one on the opposite side. Then you'll grab your post, it will slide into the other side, and you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to put one screw on this side, as well as one screw on the opposite side. These corner braces, what we were mentioning earlier, these are going to go into the corner. Now what we like to see is that the corner brace gets screwed into the leg, not into the rafter. This will help stop the wobble of the building. Whatever you do for screwing on the one side, do the same on the opposite side of the rafter. So once again, you're going to have a screw here into the rafter, into the dowel, into the dowel that goes into the post, as well into the brace in the corner here, and as well as up here. Then, on the smaller buildings that don't have any welded center collar tie, you're going to put a brace as well, dead center of the rafter, same application. You're going to put a screw here and here as well as on the opposite side. At this point now you have all your rafters and legs attached to each other. You're going to have them all set on the side. What you're going to do is you're going to get one person on one side and one person on the other side. You're going to then stand your frame up with your rafter. You're going to come over to your base rail and you're going to slide your post right over top of your dowels. That's going to complete this hoop. You'll do the whole the same thing the whole way down. Then you're going to grab one of your self-tapping screws. You're going to put it in this side as well as in this side. The frame is then standing. Then what you do is you want to get the location of your building exactly where you want to put it. You want to grab a long tape and you want to corner square your building. This is very, very important to keep all the sheeting and everything 100% square. Once you've done that, then grab your very first sheet and lay it down beside your base rail, just as you see right here. The trick to do, so you don't have to transfer march twice, is you grab your sheet. For example, if the base rail is a 20 foot long base rail, your sheet's 21 feet. So if you grab your tape and you hold it so it's six inches over, grab your Sharpie and mark the sheet on every stud the whole way down. So when you bring the sheet up, up on top of the roof, it stops your legs from going out of parallel. This will keep everything strong and skewed. So now you're ready to put your cladding onto your frame. You're going to set two step ladders up, one at the one side of the building on the front and one at the same side of the building close to the back. You're going to grab that sheet that you made those marks on, transfer it up onto your roof. All those marks will line up your rafters so you know exactly where your rafter should sit. As far as in line, this may be challenging to see. So what you got to do is you look at your sheet, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five high ribs. The very center is the third rib. If you have a look here, 
that third rib will go dead center on the rafter. That's how you know your sheet's not like that or like that. That will keep everything parallel and plumb the whole way through. Your very first sheet, you start in the dead center. For if your building is a 10 wide, a 12, a 16, or an 18, or a 22, your sheeting starts dead center. If you have ordered up a 14 or a 20, what you do then is your sheeting actually joins at the center. So your first sheet's gonna go like this, your next sheet then will lap underneath. Um, once your first sheet is on, take your time with it, line everything up. Your next sheet then will come and lap underneath the sheet like that, like a shingle effect on both sides. And then you work your way down. So as far as screwing goes, you've been given all the same screws. The same screws do the frame as they do the roof. Your screwing pattern, if you come in a little closer here, I'll show you. Basically, you're gonna put a screw this is what we call the mountains, and this is what we call the valley. You're gonna put one screw here, another screw here. You don't have to screw here and here. You put one screw in the valley, wherever you put it is sufficient. Okay, so you got your cardboard up. The very last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna install your trim. Um, there's zero purpose to the trim. It's just for aesthetics, that's it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your trim. You're gonna grab the end of the trim and you're gonna flush it up way at the end up here. You're going to start there. What's going to happen? It's going to hang. It's going to hang long like this. You're going to put your screws in your trim right through the top, through the high ribs on the cladding. In order to get this bend, what you're going to do is you're going to grab a square. You're going to find that high rib. You're going to grab a pencil and you're going to mark the face of the trim. Then you're going to get, grab a pair of tin snips and you're going to cut this face. You'll end up in total doing three cuts on the face. And what your end result will be is a trim folded like this. You're going to have it long on the bottom. You're going to cut the bottom for length as well. And that's your finished look when you're done. Okay, so you got your building up. Now you're, it's time to get your rear wall installed. A lot of people have asked, been asking how to put this together. So this is a little video to show you. Basically what you're going to have, you're going to have your base rail for your back wall or your front wall kit. What you're going to do is you're going to slide it in flush with the last rafter. You're gonna grab one of these 90 brackets and two screws, and you're gonna put that 90 bracket right in the kitty corner, just like that. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a screw in this side and a screw in this side. Once you got that done, then you're gonna to get to your, your studs, your uprights. We've been giving you enough uprights to do it every four feet. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your stud onto here. It's a really simple concept. You're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna put a 90 bracket on that side, as well as on this side and do the screw pattern the exact same and that will be the way to frame in your rear wall okay so you've attached your base your back base rail or your front base rail to the ground you've got your studs gonna you're getting ready to install your studs when you get to your studs attaching them to your rafters you see how we've done here that's the finished product in order to get to that point you're gonna put your stud up you're gonna scribe it on the angle of the rafter you're then gonna cut that stud and then you're going to basically grab your 90 brackets and attach it that way on both sides. And that's as easy as it is. The two different roof designs we've been explaining to you the whole time is the round frame. Typically your metal on a round frame building, your metal will wrap right around the corner. It's going to come down about a foot on each side. The trim you'll see in the earlier video as well. This is all installed. The other roof line we do is the A-frame style. Um, the biggest difference between this is the metal on the A-frame runs from your ridge down to your eave. So the traditional way. Um, as far as getting the installation for this, there's really not much difference. Um, you're going to have a little bit of a different rafter. You're going to have a corner brace built into your rafter. This will all be done ahead of time. The only difference is, basically, if you look underneath, is your hat track. This is going to support your cladding. It's basically glorified strapping, but it's all galvanized hat track as well. This is going to hang over six inches as well on the front and six inches on the back. 